This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and you are watching Headlines You May Have Missed for Thursday, January 4th, 2018. On this edition of Headlines You May Have Missed, we'll be looking at PA Gov goes schizo over guns for pot smokers. Life on Earth is even older. Just a little DHS employee hack, or excuse me, leak. Turkey blocks grease and more. So we're gonna go right to our first story, and this one's this one's a little schizophrenic. This is this is about the in Pennsylvania recently they they legalized medical marijuana, so you can get your medical marijuana card. They have marijuana dispensaries you can buy your marijuanas but eh, you know i have fibromyalgia and some people were like hey you know you could probably get a medical marijuana card if, if i wanted a mar medical marijuana card i wouldn't have gotten it and i said nah 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 because i know what's coming what's coming is 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 is, is what actually arrived so uh, and I'm reading here from WESA.FM. The people who signed up to receive medical marijuana will be on a registry that licensed gun dealers will have to reference as part of the background check process before selling a weapon. Uh, now, the, the, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives regulates the sales of far, firearms. And, say, and Governor, but what Governor Wolf said... People should not have to make that choice. But meanwhile, while Governor Tom Wolf is coming out and saying uh, the federal government needs to do the right thing here, in other words, not enforce the federal law. See, it's illegal to smoke mar medical marijuana at the federal level, but it's not at the Pennsylvania level, so there's a... There's a little divide here. But within the Pennsylvania government, you have the, the Pennsylvania State Police decided to, to send out a little, uh, put, put a little warning up there. Are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance? Okay, well, that's on the form. And then the form warns, the use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law, regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medicinal or recreational purposes in the state where you reside. Now, that's on the form itself. But the Pennsylvania State Police, and see, there's two different stories here. So one is, Wolf, we won't take uh, guns away from medical marijuana users. But meanwhile, the Pennsylvania State Police, they have a different version. So on they actually put that statement on the Pennsylvania State, State Police website. It is unlawful to keep possession of any firearms which you owned or had in your possession prior to obtaining a medical marijuana card. And you should consult an attorney about the best way to dispose of your firearms. Of course, that's the that's their unique statement. Uh, and then, and then they add uh, as a follow-up. Uh, according to the Pittsburgh Post Gazette, State Police spokesperson Ryan Tarkowski suggested seeking legal counsel. It is unlawful to keep possession of firearms atone, obtained prior to registering. The Pennsylvania State Police is not in the business of, of offering uh, legal advice, but it might be a good idea to contact an attorney about how best to dispose their firearms. And then a uh, criminal defense attorney that the, this site, uh, the, Pens the, the Pittsburgh KDKA TV news outlet uh, talked to said, it disturbs me greatly to see the Pennsylvania State Police put on the rep website reference to federal law while ignoring the fact that it is legal under Pennsylvania law. So they give you a little bit of a leash, they let it out, and then the Pennsylvania State Police are like, not so fast. And then the Pennsylvania governor says to the state police, not so fast. So you got a little schizophrenia going on there. So let's get to our, our next story here. New evidence shows life on Earth started earlier than previously thought. So this is from edgylabs.com. Today, current estimates of the original date of life on Earth vary between 3.8 billion and 4.3 billion years old. However, a recent study by researchers at the University of Tokyo challenged these estimates, deeming them 
highly controversial and suggested that life on Earth existed from as early as 3.95 giga years or billion years ago. You know, I, I like giga years, but I'm going to start using that. I didn't even know that was a thing. Now that I know it's a thing, it's my thing. Hey, you got 3.95 giga years. What? Yeah, giga years. Now, in yet another study, researchers believe they have found the earliest traces of life ever found that have been dated to around 3.5 billion years ago. And it's a microfossil. And there you see, if you're looking, if you're... If you're not listening to the audio podcast version of this and you're watching the video, you can see the image here of the microfossil that was found that hints at life. Well, they hint at an earlier development of life. So the next story is DHS admits major leak affecting uh, 240,000. 247,000 employees. And this is from infosecurity-magazine.com. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security has confirmed a major privacy leak affecting nearly a quarter of a million employees as well as others so associated with departmental, departmental investigations. The agency revealed in a statement yesterday that the privacy incident did not stem from an external attack and that affected individuals' personal information was not the primary target of the unauthorized transfer of data. The incident relates to a database containing personally identifiable information, or PII? P? Okay, used by the DHS office for the Inspector General. The statement added, on May 10th, 2017, as part of an ongoing criminal investigation being conducted by DHS OIG and the U.S. Attorney's Office, DHS OIG discovered an unauthorized copy of its investigative case management system in the possession of a former DHS OIG employee. Two groups of people are affected, 240,000 current and former DHS employees. Okay, just take that in. Remember when the Department of Homeland Security was first formed? It was originally intended to be a bridge, uh, a way for all of the, the other intelligence departments to be able to talk to one another so they could make sure that 911 never happened again. Now the DHS has, has become... Basically, if you really want to know what it is, it's it's essentially it's it's a domestic army in which the enemy is primarily American citizens. That's that's the DHS. That's the Patriot Act and all that stuff. That's, that's how all of that emerged. And sadly, I come from the state where the uh, the first DHS secretary came from, Pennsylvania, and that was. Governor Tom Ridge, he was the first secretary. It was a lot smaller when he started, a lot bigger now. So there you go. If you worked for the Department of Homeland Security, your data is now at risk. Uh, remember, security. Security being the key word here. So thank you, DHS. Good job. Good job. Let's get to the next story. We don't have time. We don't have time. Got to get to many stories as we possibly can. Turkey prevents Greek ships from approaching Disputed islets, and this is from GreekReporter.com. A warship and two Coast Guard boats from Greece were intercepted by Turkey's Coast Guard upon approaching disputed islets in the Aegean on Wednesday. The standoff between the vessels from the two countries has lasted five hours. Dogan News Agency reported the two countries' boats were 30 meters apart and ran parallel to each other off the coast of Bodrum's Turgutrais neighborhood along the southern Aegean coast, according to witnesses. The report said Greek boats intended to head toward the disputed islets known as Imia Islets by Greece and Kardak Islets. Of course, they'd have different names by Turkey. The islets are a pair of two small uninhabited rocks in the Aegean Sea located between the Greek island chain 
of the the Dodecanese, Dodecanes, Dodecanes, and the southwestern mainland coast of Turkey. And Greece and Turkey nearly went to war over these islets in 1995. It bears, bears watching here, and it's also of, of note that uh, Turkey is, is in the process of uh, acquiring a small aircraft carrier from Spain, which is it's, it's just a sure sign. Because right now, without an aircraft carrier, Turkey's air force is, is limited in how it can deal with... Uh, uh, giving its ships cover if they were to engage in a naval war with the Greeks. So that bears watching what's going on with Turkey and Greece. A lot of it stems from there's a lot of uh, 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 suddenly they're finding a lot of oil, natural gas reservoirs underneath the oceans in, in areas that, that, that basically Greeks controls and Greece, some of those areas are areas where Turkey has at one point claimed and would like to claim again because there's, 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 what's, what's, there's, there's, oh, oil in them there hills or, well, oil under the waves. So pay attention to Turkey and Greece. And if you go to iState.tv, you'll find this is one of the things that I'm, that I'm following with some degree of regularity. But that's enough of that for now. We want to get to the next story here, which will be Trump administration pushes for a cha pushes for a change that could derail the census. Now, I don't know if that uh, title is hyperbolic or not, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll read from this. Uh, this is from centralmain.com. Investigative reporting organization ProPublica should point out ProPublica is, I'm going to say it's a left-leaning entity, disclosed last week that a Justice Department official formally asked the Census Bureau to add a question to the 2020 census. Adding any question at this stage would be dicey, given that the Bureau often runs extensive field tests before fiddling with its forms, ensuring that the last-minute changes do not throw off its counting efforts. Worse, the Justice Department requested that the Bureau inquire about people's citizenship status. This threatens to sabotage the 2020 count. Asking about citizenship status would drive down response rates since its inception. The census has not only counted votes, it has taken a precise snapshot of everyone in the country. This helps government agencies to direct scarce daughters, dollars and businesses to guide investment decisions. <laughs> okay, I'm already for it. No, no, don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not for the government asking if you're a citizen or you're not a citizen. I am for the government sabotaging its own census efforts. The less it knows about the reality of, of us, us, us non-gov people, the better. So I'm 100% for this. Probably not in the way the Trump administration would like me to be, but I'm totally, I'm 100% for sure this. This, this. this is a good thing, man. This is a good thing. Not not for the reason that they want, but but still a good thing. And, and on this theme, we go right to what we're going to do. Our next story here is Trump ICE chief wants to prosecute politicians who won't lock up more immigrants. The Trump administration is considering, pro and this is from HuffingtonPost.com, the Trump administration is considering prosecuting state and local officials for not fully cooperating with immigration and custom enforcement. The agency's acting director said Tuesday in an escalation of his threats against so-called sanctuary cities and the undocumented immigrants who live in them. The Justice Department did not rule out acting on Thomas Homan's suggestion, an official told HuffPost on Wednesday that the department is working with ICE to explore any and all potential options for reigning in jurisdictions that limit their assistance with federal deportation efforts. And then the little... Uh, little uh, last commentary here, the last paragraph it will read from this. But Homan's plan is likely unconstitutional, legal experts say, and the acting director's argument that sanctuary cities are protest 
protecting hordes of dangerous criminals isn't backed up by his agency's own data. Recent reports from the Department of Homeland Security, which includes ICE, show the Trump administration itself is increasingly cracking down on petty offenders, not violent felons. So, so be that as it may, the whole claim of constitutional or unconstitutional, yeah, there's no rule of law. There's only rule of power. So <laughs> what, if, if, if Trump has the right people in the right judge places, it'll be constitutional. If he doesn't, it won't. That's the bottom line. The language, uh, the very nature of language itself will allow judges to find whatever loopholes or ghosts in the language that they have to to justify this if, if, if they want that to happen. So, so just, just take that into account there. And we're going to get to our, I guess we're, this is going to be the last story that we're going to do here. I'm just going to do this real quick. FCC announces boost to regulated cable rates. Now, before I get to the story, I just want you to take in the fact that you you live in a land, and this is especially for the folks who, you know, you're the capitalist, you're the free marketers, and, you know, America, the land of the free. You live in a land. I live in a land. You live in a land. We, we Americans as in people who are quote-unquote citizens who live here, uh, you live in a land in which the government is, basically it has price controls on, on ca cable companies. So the federal government in its uh, in magnanimity has, has ruled uh, that, the, that the cable companies can, can increase their prices. Rate regulated, this is from broadcastingcable.com. Rate regulated cable operators can boost prices by 2.09%, according to the FCC's latest inflation adjustment figure. That is the fourth highest quarterly adjustment in the past 19 quarters and up from the 1.42% bump for the comparable quarter last year. Local franchise authorities can, but are not required to, regulate basic rates where there is a lack of effective competition. The price of the non-external portion of rates is adjusted quarterly based on change. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that. But anyway, you get the point. The point is you live in a land where there are price controls on your cable and the federal government has, has magnanimously ruled that the cable companies, if they so choose, can raise their rates by, by 2.9%. Zero nine percent. So there you go. I think that's 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 it. That's that's all we could get in here. That's our twenty minutes. Uh, just about up here. We got a minute or two left here. This has been headlines you may have missed, and you can go to. Let me let me get out of the website there. There you see the headline there. You can go to isheadlines.com. And if you go to isheadlines.com, you'll get into the latest headlines you may have misreported. Well, there'll be a bunch of them listed, but you'll see the, the latest one listed. And you can find all of the links to these stories as well as other stories that we didn't get to, such as... Uh, Turkey must stop barbaric blockade of Armenia. 3D printing increases memory of flexible silicon chips 7,000 times. AI uses Titan supercomputer to create deep neural nets in less than a day and, and more. So I will see you here tomorrow on the iState.tv or the iState TV Facebook page and as, as well as the no consent uh, from or the, the Liberty Principle page, as well as my my personal page. If you don't like me on, well, if you're not a friend of mine on Facebook, if you look up Paul Gordon, I won't say that I accept all friend requests, but uh, I'm, I'm pretty liberal with the friend requests I do accept. And we'll see you all those places tomorrow at 1230. And be sure, after you're done watching this, which you should be, like as soon as I'm done talking here, in about 10 minutes, you're going to make sure that you go over to the Sovereignty Network Facebook page 
and tune in to their Crypto Corner Live show. If you're into cryptocurrencies, definitely tune into Crypto Corner Live. That's exactly what I plan on doing as soon as I'm done here. And you'll also be able to find the headlines, uh, headlines you may have missed on our YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash iState. This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv. I'll see you tomorrow at 1230. And tonight, I will see you at 9 p.m. on Is Daily Thursday.